Welcome to Daily News Weekly, where we bring you the stories from the past week that you might have missed. I'm your host, Michael Sheridan, and once again, I'm in my backyard because it is July 4th. It's the holiday. That's why I'm not going to wear a tie for this episode. Yes, that's how I'm going to celebrate the holiday. But we have got a lot of stuff going on, so let's get to it. In this story, the first of three that we'll be revisiting today, we're going to Alabama, where a pregnant woman had been charged with manslaughter in the death of her unborn baby. Marsha Jones, who was five months pregnant at the time, was shot in the stomach by Ebony Jemison back in December during a fight. As a result, Marsha's unborn child was killed. The two had apparently been arguing about the child's father. Now, as we discussed last week, Ebony Jemison had originally been charged for the shooting death. However, as authorities investigated and discovered that Marsha Jones was really kind of responsible for the attack, and initiated the fight, they decided that instead of charging Ebony for the shooting death of the unborn child, they then charged Marsha. Prosecutors, however, have now decided that they are no longer going to press charges. District Attorney Lanise Washington said in a statement, an unborn child was tragically lost and families on both sides of this matter have suffered. Nothing we do today or in the future will change that reality. Now, part of what seemed to remain unclear before was why Ebony didn't face any charges. It's still not particularly clear, but it does seem that they are operate that the authorities there are operating under the idea that Ebony acted in self-defense. So she won't be prosecuted for the shooting. And it seems now at this point, no one's going to be prosecuted. What do you think? Did the authorities make the right decision this time? Or should somebody pay for the death of that baby? Cockroaches are evolving and soon they're going to be impossible to kill. A Purdue University study found that a commonly found German species of roach is being born with an immunity to toxins which they haven't yet been in contact with. This incredibly accelerated rate of immunity means that roaches will probably be nearly impossible to kill with pesticides in the future. You know what that means. We're all just gonna have to do it the old fashioned way, shoes. Now, in the second of our three follow-ups, we're going to Florida, where a woman had been charged with armed burglary after bur bur burglary, after taking her uh, estranged husband's guns and turning him into police. Now, just to quickly recap, this is Courtney Irby. She is in the middle of an ugly divorce, which included an incident where her husband allegedly hit her vehicle with his own car and drove her off the road. Fearing for her safety and the safety of her children, she filed for a temporary injunction for protection against him and won, which meant he needed to turn over his guns. Fearing he wouldn't, she did it instead. Then police arrested her and charged her with armed burglary. Now in the past week, more details about their relationship have come out and things have gotten a little more muddied. So it isn't quite as cut, cut and dry as it was originally. Uh, as it seems, uh, the husband allegedly emptied the couple's checking account. She went to his house to then and then grabbed some watches and a GoPro, GoPro camera that she was gonna pawn. And then she saw the guns and she decided to take those and turn them in to authorities. She feared that he wasn't going to do it and after the incident with the car she seemed to legitimately fear for her life. So she was afraid he wouldn't turn the guns in himself so she did it. Now authorities have decided to drop the felony charges. She now only faces a misdemeanor charge of trespassing. Meanwhile the husband Joseph is facing a felony aggravated battery charge which I believe is in relation to the incident with the car. So what do you guys think? Does Courtney still deserve to face charges for taking the guns and turning them over to police? A woman in Kansas apparently wanted to eat her cake and have it too. Police in Wichita Falls say a woman went shopping at Walmart, grabbed a cake, and while she walked around the megastore, she ate half of it. Then, according to authorities, when she got to the cashier, she insisted that she shouldn't have to pay for the full cake and only for the half of the cake that remained. Now, apparently, Walmart didn't want to press charges against the woman. However, she has been permanently banned from that particular Walmart. And for our third updated story of this week, we're going to Boston, where the Straight Pride Parade is ready to go. Apparently, this collection of knuckleheads who call themselves Super Happy Fun America got permission to do their march in August. According to the group, the parade will start at Copley Square and end at Boston City Hall. Right-wing troll Milo Yanilopoulos is uh, apparently serving as the Grand Marshal. Now the group, which did recently get sent some uh, mysterious envelopes that actually turned out to be just full of glitter, 
insist they are not an anti-gay movement. John Hugo, president of Super Happy Fun America said, we're not anti-gay, we're pro-straight. We're a sexual orientation advocacy group and we're a young civil rights movement. That's cute, but let's look at that. I don't recall anybody making any attempts to restrict the civil rights of straight people. I don't see any, I see anything that indicates that straight people are targeted for uh, uh, beatings or murder uh, or any of those sorts of things. I don't really know what exactly they're advocating or what exactly it is that they are you know, fighting in terms of a civil rights movement. It just seems to me that the only reason for this is because it's a lot of guys who are a little insecure about themselves and they feel the need to uh, create this parade, which does nothing but uh, dehumanize and humiliate and poke fun at the very people they claim not to hate. The state of Florida is going to war with iguanas. The population of the green reptiles has exploded, according to the state's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, so they want residents to kill them. The FWC encourages homeowners to kill green iguanas on their own property whenever possible. Labeling these creatures as invasive, authorities also noted that people are allowed to kill green iguanas if they see them in as many as 22 different public locations. Now, before you start going crazy and thinking this is a really extreme reaction, they're not exactly that harmless. Apparently, they cause a lot of problems with our agriculture, they cause problems on the roads, they can actually impact uh, the uh, power in the area and affect transformers. I'm not really quite sure how any of that works, but I suppose maybe they eat the wiring. Officials also say that iguanas can transmit salmonella and apparently are an FAA safety hazard. One of the reasons they seem to think that the, there's an explosion in the uh, iguana population is because normally cold weather would keep the population low but because the weather there has been so warm for the past year or so, the, uh, the population of iguanas has apparently been on the rise. So good hunting Floridians, and stay safe out there. That's this week's episode, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button down below, and please share this episode with your friends, your family, your coworkers, and even that guy down the street that you really can't stand, but you end up talking to him anyway because he's always standing outside of his house and every time you walk by, he has to start a conversation. You know that guy. You all live near that guy.